Hello, and welcome to this episode of Registered Nurses in Primary Care. I'm your host, Emily Patton. We are privileged to have Dr. Deb Bowers with us today. Dr. Bowers is an instructor at UAB School of Nursing and teaches primarily in the undergraduate pre-licensure community health courses. She also serves as a faculty member on the UAB School of Nursing HRSA grant titled Building a Resilient Primary Care Registered Nurse Workforce for Chronic Disease Prevention and Control in Alabama. We also have with us Ms. Erin Clarkson, a social worker and the patient support services manager at the Heart Failure Transitional Care Clinic and Path Clinic for Diabetes, which are both UAB nurse managed clinics. Welcome Dr. Bowers and Ms. Clarkson. Thank you. Today we will be discussing social determinants of health in primary care. So Ms. Clarkson, can you tell us a little bit about what the social determinants of health are? Yes. So um, firstly, it is a um, Healthy People 2020 objective defined by the CDC. And the official definition um, by the CDC is conditions in the environment in which people are born, live, learn, work, play, worship, and age that affect a wide range of health, functioning, and quality of life outcomes and risks. Um, the unofficial definition, and I think the implication for primary care, is um, it's the iniquity. So the unequal access to the resources and services and money and goods that um, sort of bleed on um, unfairness and discrimination that impact health. So um, in other words, it's that social policies impact health. Okay. Dr. Bowers, do you have anything to add to that definition? Um, I would just like to add that the um, importance of addressing the social determinants really can completely redirect someone's health outcomes, mm -hmm. and overlooking them can lead to very poor health outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Dr. Bowers, how do the social determinants of health affect a person's well-being? The social determinants of health um, can trigger and prolong chronic disease, and they can also cause um, a risk factor for chronic disease in children if they live in a stressful environment where the social mm -hmm. determinants of health, um, high crime neighborhoods mm -hmm. lead to high stress, lead to high cortisol levels, which predispose even children mm -hmm. to chronic disease early in life. Mm -hmm. They're the critical, a key component to preventing chronic disease and in many cases even acute infections. Can you talk us through some of the categories of the social determinants of health? Yes, the uh, categories, um, and there are actually 15 individual determinants, and so I'll just go through the categories and mention a few of them. Okay. Um, one of them is economic stability, and that's going to be um, things like whether or not someone's employed, and if they're employed, whether or not they earn a living wage. Um, housing instability, can they find adequate housing? based on their employment and their wage, and do they have access to enough food, or do they live in a food insecure environment where they never know where their next meal is going to come from? Yes. And so that would be the first category. Okay. Second category would be education, and those are things like early childhood education, children that are able to attend preschool and kindergarten generally have better literacy and language skills, which are social determinants of health, and those that are able to get higher education and have high school education also are healthier. So education is a social determinant. Um, social and community context, that refers to things like discrimination. Um, if individuals are not able to access certain services because of race, gender, then that is a social determinant that can definitely be a negative for long-term health and well-being. Um, civic and social participation. Those that live in neighborhoods or in communities where there's low social participation and there's unrest, that's a social determinant of health. Um, the other categories are health and health care, which would be health literacy um, and access to care services. So those that live from far distances from care don't have the same health outcomes. The likelihood that you could die, for example, in Alabama from a motor vehicle accident in a rural county is double the likelihood that you would die from a motor vehicle accident in one of the cities where there's a lot of health care access. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important social determinant as well. And the last one is neighborhood and built environment. 
And that would be, for example, a neighborhood with a high crime. Individuals would live with constant stress and threat. That is a definite negative for health and well-being. Access to healthy food. Um, in certain built environments and neighborhoods, they might have a grocery store, but the ability to purchase healthy foods is very limited, or they're outside of their price range. Mm -hmm. um, housing quality and the amount of green space in a neighborhood is a definite plus or minus to health. If the housing quality is very poor, for example, and there's a lot of mold and mildew, those with respiratory problems or chronic asthma never really are able to be trigger-free. Their asthma is constantly being triggered, for example. And if there's a neighborhood where there's no green space, there's no opportunities for people to be outdoors and to exercise. Mm -hmm. So all of those are important factors for long-term health and well-being. Thank you. That makes sense. Ms. Clarkson, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think this is such a complex question because these are woven in to, um, to people and so really affect so many facets. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the reason that they're critical to primary care is because um, these are the factors that look like non-adherence and non-compliance in terms of medical care, whether they follow through um, and put their health as a priority. Gotcha. So we're lucky to have both of you here, a representative from social work and a representative from nursing. So would you mind telling us a little bit about um, how the RN and the interprofessional team can address social determinants of health in primary care? And we'll start with Dr. Bowers. Sure. The uh, nurses' role in primary care, um, we need to, first of all, begin to look at the big picture as nurses in primary care, not just solely focus on maybe the diagnosis at hand. Um, but to look for and explore clues. Why is this diagnosis presenting at this time? Why is this person at the clinic at this time? And what is the social, family, and environmental factors that could be making a negative for their per person's outcomes and their health, how they feel, and to begin to look for a connection between that environment it could be a work environment, it could be a home environment, it could be an entire neighborhood or community issue, but to begin to connect the dots as nurses. Yeah. How about you, Ms. Clarkson? Um, I think one of the, the most important first steps is to build that therapeutic relationship. Um, anybody on the healthcare team, because they are not gonna share that they are facing any of these um, or any kind of background if they don't trust. Mm -hmm. Um, I think something else is, and Dr. Bowers alluded to this, but considering social barriers to the plan of care. So, you know, be realistic, talk about those factors. Um, the other thing I have is just to use the interprofessional team expertise. So um, I think social workers are trained to, to focus on some of these, um, but to also factor in self-determination in terms of the patient so that they, they do have a role in the decisions that they make. Um, and I think often in our clinics, we see students and professionals of, of every discipline say, you know, you need to change this and you need to change your job and you need to take this medicine. And they don't, they don't include the person in the decision making. Um, and then, you know, they get frustrated when the person doesn't follow through or doesn't change their whole life based on this one or two visit. Um, so I think just anticipating that it is a slow process, um, get comfortable talking about some of those things and consider um, a screening tool. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important for us to remember that the patient is part of the mm -hmm. care team. I mm -hmm. think we forget that quite often. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of the screening tools that you mentioned, um, we have a couple examples that we'll be putting on the screen to show people um, some examples of tools that you can use to screen for some of these social determinants of health. Um, are there any other resources that either of you can think of or anything else you'd like to add before we finish up? I would just like to um, just agree with Ms. Clarkson that the teamwork is so essential mm -hmm. in caring for our clients and really having the time and the patience mm. to invest in that trust relationship and respect their autonomy in the long run is going to really improve 
our ability to care and our ability to advocate for them because the more they trust us, the more they share with us about their environmental challenges or maybe employment challenges, and the more we can advocate as a team. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you both for joining us today. This has been very informative, and thank you for tuning in. We hope you join us for our next episode of Registered Nurses and Primary Care.